Can you um, expand your thinking a little bit on Martha and Mary? Just say yes, it'll help you. Good. Because, you know, we all know this story, I'm guessing, right? Everybody here knows the story of Martha and Mary. It's used often to criticize people who are too performance-oriented and, and too busy and nervous, and clearly that's the language here. I just want you to try to expand yourself a little bit and put yourself back in, into that culture. It's hard to do because our culture is so different. Our culture is so much freer than the culture that they have. But if you were a woman, you weren't considered of equal status. Forget about voting. You were a piece of property many times. It's not well known, but the Jewish, uh, the, 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 the people that followed the laws were divorcing their wives at a whim. The men could divorce their wives on a whim over any of the slightest problems. And Jesus addressed that. He said, no, no, only through sexual uh, misconduct. That's the only way. But you can't break this covenant. We don't get the full range of how important that is to him. So especially that we're talking about Mary here with Martha and Mary, we know that he was in their house, and Jesus loved them, and he loved the brother that had died. That's going to be later, but here he's just in their house, and again, I'm going to guess that most of you know it, but we'll start in verse 38. It says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their journey, they came to a village where a woman welcomed Jesus into her home. Her name was Martha, and she had a sister named Mary. Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. All right, just meditate on that for a minute, okay? That's your altar. That's you in the morning before you leave the house. That's saying, I'm going to start my day right here, attentively listening to what you want to tell me. You've got a game plan for today, different than any other day, because today's different than any other day, right? Are we doing this? Are we attentively? That's a beautiful word, isn't it? She had Sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. Maybe this is a big deal to me because for a long time in my Christian life, I didn't do this. I waited till the end of the day. Maybe I'll get to it. That's silly. If you're ever going to ask for guidance, do it before you step out of the house. That's when you need the GPS. Okay? Better to do it at night than not do it at all. But boy, morning, good time. Martha became exasperated. How many can relate? Yeah, I saw a lot of hands are going up. By finishing the numerous household chores in preparation for her guests. So she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. How many can relate? It's, yeah, I'm, that's not a trick question. Just people being honest. Here's the deal, though. God was in the living room. You believe that? God in the flesh was in the living room. Can the meal wait? Yes! Okay? So this is what happens in life. We're so routine. We, we just get into the fall into these ruts and these habits. And one definition of a rut is an open grave on one end. Right? Oh. So look, be careful about the ruts. Be led by the Spirit. Be alert to what He's saying to you. He, he told Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son, right? But while the knife was in the air, he gave him another order. So what if he wasn't listening and he just went ahead and killed him? That wouldn't have been God's will, would it? So there's a preceding word that comes from the mouth of God. And Mary was saying, I don't care about the kitchen right now. God is in the living room. He's right here in the flesh. I may never get this opportunity again. But let's just think, boy, I said I'm going to stretch a little bit, is that Martha wasn't just nervous about Mary not helping. Women were not supposed to be with men. And Jesus was teaching in the living room to other men too. And the women weren't allowed to be with the men. Was Jesus mad about this? Why not? Paradigm shift. <laughs> it's a new world now. It's a paradigm shift. It's like, oh no, the women are not going to be considered as just property anymore. They have equal status. In fact, the first person who's going to see me coming out of the grave is an ex-prostitute that used to be full of seven demons. Not a very good resume. But Christian is all you need on your resume. Follower of Jesus. So now Martha's like, oh man, we're going to be in so much trouble after this meeting's over because they're going to say, Mary shouldn't have been sitting with the men. 
Now, look, you're laughing. I get it. But like we do this today. So that's all I'm asking you to do is just like, where am I doing that in my life where I'm too worried about the conventional way of thinking, but God is in the living room, man. Like this is an opportunity I may not get again. So I might have to change my way of doing things in the normal routine and be open to what he's doing. And that's in a, in a nutshell what the prophetic life is meant to be. Will you be right 100% of the time? Probably not. But the more you exercise those muscles, the better you get, you'll get at it. The more discerning you will be. Don't just say, well, if God wants it to happen, it'll just happen. He's sovereign. Sorry. That's such an excuse. He wants us to pray. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and purpose to seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that's all on us. Then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. So let's just finish it. The Lord answered her, Martha, you're right. What was I thinking? <laughs> no, that's not what it says. Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you so upset and troubled, pulled away by all these many distractions? Are they really that important? Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. That's my altar verse for you today, okay? What's most important? Sit at the feet of Jesus. Hear what he's saying to you today. Don't have this mindset, he doesn't want to talk to me. I'm a nobody. That's not right. That's the devil telling you that. Let's stand, okay? Let's all recognize our citizenship in the kingdom. Thank you, Andrew. Somebody's excited. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. How about you? The passport is on your heart. Your green card is in your heart. The temple of God, the Holy Spirit, lives inside your heart. Mary chose the better thing. Not wrong to serve. It's great to serve. But that can't become an idol of serving, right? You can't find your value and your identity in serving. Because God may change your serving. I did that when I was at another church. I was the head of the music ministry, and we were praying for more musicians. And God sent a better musician than me, which is not that hard, frankly. <laughs> That's why we were praying for more, right? So he sends one, and he says, okay, you can move on now. You don't have to do this anymore. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to. I know, but I have something else I want you to do. Oh, but I really like this. Well, you know, Abraham went not knowing where he's going. You're going to like that too. And I did. I kept, I stayed in the band with him as the leader. That's really hard after you've been the one doing that. Like, you really have to humble yourself. Like, why'd you play that chord? Don't you know we do it this way? Like, God say, no, you're not in charge anymore. He's in charge, remember? <laughs> you prayed for him. <laughs> so don't take your identity in what you do, because what you do is going to change, but who you are is not going to change. You're a son, a daughter of the living God. And the more time you spend at his feet, the more that's going to be real and aware to you. And I want that. I don't know about you, but I live for that. It's the most important thing. I didn't always believe that. I, I said I believed it, but my actions would have said no. And I repented to the Lord for that. So maybe we should do that. In any area of my heart where you haven't been first, Lord, I repent. Could you do that? Could you lift your hands? I'm not going to say it for you. You need to say it. Anywhere I haven't put you first, too busy in the kitchen when you were in the living room, I repent, Lord. He's a good father. He loves you. He's so happy you're realizing this. And prayerlessness is identified as a sin in the Bible. So this is biblical, what we're doing right now. I don't want any other gods before you. I want you first. I want to recognize the altar. It's moving because I'm moving, and you move with me, Lord. Help me not be so caught up in my activities and my false identities that I miss you when you're right in the house with me. I want to sit at your feet. I want to rebuild that personal altar. I give permission to Holy Spirit to show me the direction that you want me to go. The picture of you, Lord, as an asylum seeker looking to be in my life, wow. Why you would love me so much, I have no idea. But I know you do. And I keep the door, come on, say this with me. I keep the door open of my heart. And you are invited in to have free reign in every part of my house. 